Welcome all you beautiful souls to your weekly energy update and we're going to be looking at the week of June 12th through June 19th and we have a very wonderful super full moon in Sagittarius that's happening on the 14th. Now that it will be at like 551 a.m. Mountain Time so it'll of course vary throughout the world or wherever you may be at but there's some wonderful things coming in. First of all it is a super full moon which means it's going to be closer to us like I have a little diagram here of this is the sun and this is the earth and here's the moon. The full moon happens when it's over here and it's shining uh, you know beyond the earth where we can see it. Um, in the night sky, of course. But it's called a super full moon because the moon does not orbit in an exact, um, you know, orbit, um, you know, very exactly circular. It's more oval. So when it's, you know, orbiting like this and it comes into a closer spot normally than when it's out here, these are when they are super moons. So that's what's happening. It's just closer to the Earth, which means that it has has more of a gravitational pull, it's stronger um, energy, and so it's going to be extra emotional energy. And oh yay! But what's great is that it is in Sagittarius, and so that Sagittarius energy really brings in this like fullness, this uh, kind of fruition. It can have some drama, you know, either, you know, exciting dark drama or exciting happy drama, because it can bring in that optimism and the good luck of that Saturn, um, not Saturn, Sagittarius and Jupiter energy that comes in with that. And it always, Coast Sagittarius deals with travel and international things, language, uh, cultures, international business, um, even learning and education. So there's going to be a lot of themes that can be happening and being touched by this super full moon during this time. And we are definitely going to look into that because the Sagittarius energy also allows you to see things from a higher perspective. So that's one thing that we will look at for your reading is what can you see from a higher perspective this week? Another exciting kind of astrological thing that's happening with that super full moon is that the uh, Neptune is actually going to square with the sun and the earth um, and the, the moon. So that is not a like, super fun kind of energy that comes in with it because Neptune is going to be whispering to you. So there could be some confusion. There can be some self-doubt, some second guessing of yourself. And so that's one thing we'll look at too is what is Neptune whispering in your ear about your worth? So we'll look into that too. But the, you know, that's kind of like the, not the bad news. It's just challenging news. But the positive news is that Saturn is actually um, at a, a beautiful degree with the the uh, moon, which is basically um, Saturn's all about long term gains and like extra oomph, extra energy coming in that's going to help you with some forward movement, especially since uh, Mercury just came out of retrograde, you know, um, like on, on the third or fourth and towards the end of this week on the 19th is when we're completely going to be uh, exiting out of the, even the shadow of the Mercury retrograde. So you're going to have all this energy to have this forward movement. So that's something else we'll add is what long-term gain can Saturn bring into you. And then, of course, we'll also dig in for some advice. So an exciting reading. I can't wait to get into this for you. I have uh, going to provide a reading for each zodiac sign. And I'm going to go ahead and start with yours right now. All right, Taurians, this is your weekly energy update. We're going to start off by pulling a card here from the Oracle of the Seven Energies. And this is going to be what spirit is recommending that you can have this higher perspective from that Sagittarian energy of the higher perspective in your life. Uh, by the way, any of the cards that I use in a reading, I do list in the description box below. So we can give these a quick shuffle and then we will jump in here. One more time. 
All right, so for Artorians, what would you like them to know? Where can they use a higher perspective for this week? All right, this is the one right here. And you got open to discovery. Yes, definitely being open-minded, seeing things from that higher perspective allows you to see opportunities and answers and uh, different ways of doing things than you'd seen them before. And this is card number 34. I'm going to put this under the moon there. And let's see what energy comes with this card for you. Open to right up to it. So the key concepts of this card are the small bits of data you collect from the world uh, that they actually form ideas. It's the transfer of vital information via the universe always speaking to you. And the need to integrate information and be discerning about what you expose yourself to. And it says we tune into information from our outer environment, then assign meaning to it with our psyches. Every day, however, the amount of data we sort through exceeds what we're capable of processing. Absolutely, right? Especially since the advent of the internet, we have been bombarded with more than we could ever hope to absorb. Therefore, it's important to be mindful of what we expose ourselves to. Consistent exposure to unhealthy messaging invites us into a cynical, fear-based worldview. On the other hand, conscious exposure to information supporting our well-being shifts us towards growth and expansion. The choice, though, is not always obviously ours, which is why we must be discerning on a daily basis. The universe is always engaging us. We are part of it, after all, through synchronistic, uh, I'm sorry, synchronicity, omens, and other signs that point toward our best path. Our intuition helps us tune in and see our environment like an oracle. However, this new information doesn't always make sense right away. So being curious and non-resistant is the key to learning. So today, be open to receiving important information that may come from an unusual source, and oh, actually this entire week as well. The universe wants to help you, but recognizing the way this aid will arrive depends on your willingness to shut out superfluous noise. Maybe you need to take a break from social media, gossip, or the news. Don't let yourself get distracted listen without attachment and see what arises in your life expect a message from the universe and you shall have it so i love that yeah definitely this open to discovery it's and, and i love how she says it there because we can be so drawn into the chaos of the fear world especially over these last couple of years with everything that's been going on around us. So um, you can turn on the TV or the internet or Twitter or Instagram or Facebook, and you can just have all this information from all these sources. And a lot of it is fear-based. And so what I love, like with Facebook, is you can unfollow, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, pages and people and everything else and then selectively choose what appears on your feed i personally don't follow a lot of people individually i usually um, follow like uh, really um, uplifting sites and things that have things that focus like they were talking about on the unconditional love and on the positive things of life and then i go check on people you know, because you can go still go to their pages when you unfollow them, but you are still friends with them on Facebook is kind of the thing. And you can just go to it and then check out and see what happened. And when you've had enough of whatever um, is going on in their lives, you can back out of it. Right. And you're not inundated. it. It's like choosing what you bring into your eyes, your ears, your mouth, your nose, your touch, all your senses choose what you can have control over like it mentioned sometimes you're in an environment and you can't help it you know you're you're in it you're at the grocery store um or you know wherever it might be and you're overhearing things that you're like oh i just wish i could be in a place of peace and you eventually can because you don't have to be 
uh, anywhere usually 100% of the time. And then uh, during your alone time when you're able to choose uh, what you're bringing into your, your aura, into your energy, into your heart and into your body, then you choose, right? So I love that, being open to discovery, being open to new ways of looking at things. So that higher perspective, a, a perspective of looking at things from unconditional love, right? Now, we're also going to take a look here and just see what Neptune is whispering in your ear about your worth. So, uh, you know, some of the negativity that we have coming in can be our own self-talk too, right? So we have the external stuff that comes in and you have the internal noise that could be coming in. But this is always for us. All the planetary energies, all the angelic realm and all those beings of unconditional love on the other side, creator, spirit, everyone anything that they bring into our lives is for us. It's not to punish us, to laugh at us as if we, you know, <laughs> if we stumble because they're like, oh, watch this, I'm gonna put this in front of them. It's always for us to help us on our journey and our path. So what Neptune's whispering um, is on purpose. So let's take a look here. These are the black tarot. We're just gonna see what little noises are going on there in the dark part of ourselves and our unconscious, our subconscious. And like I said, our self-talk. What's all that whispering going on in there? So what's Neptune whispering to you this week? Okay, that's the one right there. And you're the king of swords. Yeah, swords are your thoughts, your beliefs, your mindsets, your attitudes. And the ace of swords actually is a very powerful weapon. Uh, because not only does it allow you to connect to the capital T truths of the, uh, you know, upper world, you know, seeing things from that higher perspective, seeing things from that, uh, all those things that are rooted in unconditional love. It actually also allows you to cut away and slice away those small T truths that are no longer serving you. So I love uh, this basically for me is what Neptune is saying to you. They're focusing on all those small T truths. They're telling you all the stuff that you have to defend. Your opinions, all the opinions you took on from popular opinions too. A lot of stuff that we automatically um, are a part of our habit of, you know, this like this kind of talked about too, the stories and the interpretation we put to things are so influenced by our childhoods and by our surroundings growing up that we take on those opinions and those stories as our truths. And that's what small t truths are. Those are of the human side of our conditioning. And they're usually rooted in fear because if you feel you need to defend something, then that's not a truth. That's a, a small t truth of the human that is an opinion. We feel we have to defend opinion, uh, but capital T truths don't need defending because truths are truth. And they don't have to be defended because it doesn't matter what people do, you're not going to change the capital T truths of the spiritual world, right? So uh, I love that they're coming in here and I just show, <laughs> I kind of have this vision that they just gave me like at the circus, you're on this wheel and you know how they strap people in and they start spinning them and they start throwing daggers at them and you're like, oh my gosh, and you're, you feel like you're spinning out of control, but it's for you to get literally sick of spinning and having that fear, all that defensiveness and all that, um, you know, all those thoughts that just keep on coming at you that you, you feel like you have to defend or um, convince others that it's true, you know? So I really feel like that's what has been happening and it's coming to like this point this week because you're just sick and tired of feeling that way, quite literally. <laughs> but let's take a look here and then see what Saturn brings in for that long, long-term gain for your life. Now, Saturn is not a nonprofit organization that uh, gives things away and hopes that you donate back to them. Saturn's a taskmaster. It'll give you something to work on. And then if you do it, then they have a, a reward that they give you afterward for it. So this is what Saturn can give to you if you choose to look into this. So let me just give these, these are the You Are Awesome deck. 
which is awesome. It's an awesome deck. I love it. It can be pretty funny cards too. All right. So for Artorians, what would you give them if they choose to accept this mission possible? Not mission impossible, mission possible. And it says, my middle name is Proton, always constant, always positive. You are welcome, Electrons. <laughs> so that, that would be you there. This is, you know, I love this, always positive. And with this awareness of being able to see things from a higher perspective, connect to the capital T Truths, knowing that you have these two choices that every moment is like, a negative choice of fear of losing conditional love or a positive uh, choice of choosing uh, those things that are of the capital T truths of unconditional love. So knowing that you have this ability to do it and put it into practice is a long-term gain because really, once you realize that there's always a second choice, you don't always have to choose the fear of the outside world. You can choose unconditional love, which gives you joy, laughter, and peace. Then you have that power to always change it in the future. So you don't fear the future as much anymore because you know that no matter what comes down the road, you're like, wait, there's a higher truth here. There's a, a, an emotion, a choice, a story of unconditional love instead of fear that I can choose. And so you truly are set free. And I love it. We're also going to pull from these Chinese tarot just to see what else, what more advice creator and spirit have for you for this week. One more time. All right, so what else? Oh my goodness, okay. <laughs> they do want this one too. They do not want all of those, but they do want this one. Okay, <laughs> there you go. Okay, what else please? Okay. And that, these two, okay. So you've got these two. These two and these two. Okay, so they do want to have it kind of set up that way, so we will do that. And we'll start with this one over here, of course, since it made itself known. And you have the devil card here, which is all right. You know, this is not a um, bad card, and don't be afraid of it unless you want to. <laughs> but because this is our shadow, this is like these voices that are coming in here. And I always think of Dr. Evil from the Austin Powers series, movies, when I, uh, when I see this, because usually they'll have like, you know, someone that, uh, you know, they'll have like, um, the devil, you know, the evil one, and they have like people that are in shackles, but the... Uh, chains around their neck are very loose where they could just take them off and sometimes they'll even show like the devil's hand with um their you know the chain that's holding them just sitting there on their hand not a grip but it can just slide right off and sometimes they'll even show like a cage without a door on it or it's unlocked it's just basically showing us that um we're not trapped we're not um forced into the slavery of this life and a sl we, we don't have to be a slave to fear because what the you know the reason why it makes me think of dr evil is dr evil is of course the villain and austin powers you know is the international man of mystery the spy and dr evil always tries to take over the world or do something very drastic and austin powers finds out and, and, and gets into his evil base or whatever, he always gets caught. And Dr. Evil, thinking he's gonna kill Austin Powers, just spills his guts to Austin Powers about his plot and his plan, and this is what he's gonna do, and blah, blah, blah. And sometimes, uh, even I think in the later ones, people are going, why you keep telling him? You know he's gonna escape and fo foil the plan. And of course he does, and so he escapes and he foils the plan of the villain. Well, the devil, the, you know, this Dr. Evil in our side of ourselves, our shadow, brings all this information up to us, right? And this is kind of what's going on with this, uh, you know, this King of Swords. They're 
overdoing it. They're being so obvious, bringing all the stuff into our face, going, this is what's keeping you restricted. This is what's keeping you small. This is what's keeping you from having that unconditional love and joy and peace and laughter. Ha ha ha. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Because then the reason why they're bringing it to us is because they know we can escape and they know that we can change from it. So it's bringing us information into our life to help us not have, you know, to do something to us. Let's see what other card comes with them. Like his companion. Yeah, there you go. The Nine of Swords. So the Nine of Swords is the Nightmare card, is the uh, Insomnia card, because they're usually exhausted uh, ha trying to live up to all those small T truths I was talking about here. And so this is what exactly, it kind of reiterates this. In fact, I kind of want to move this over here because this is such this experience here of um, bringing up all those uh, fears, all that opinion, all that external stuff from the outside world that is driving you crazy, driving you to exhaustion. And so this is that message. Let's take a look here. We have the Six of Cups, which is emotions. And we'll come back to this card here. Yeah, because I wanted me to show you this one first. Here's the Seven of Swords. So the Seven of Swords, you know, basically, um, again, you have all this, you know, all of these uh, thoughts and beliefs and mindsets, all those expectations. And you know their expectations when you hear the phrases supposed to should, need to, have to, must. And the Seven of Swords is kind of known as the Deceiver or the Thief card. And so this is, you know, basically your understanding uh, more and more throughout this week as the spark hits, which of your thoughts and your beliefs are deceiving you or deceiving yourself. And you even have this card is 34. When you add three and four together, it's seven. So this higher perspective is allowing you to go, oh, so this belief that I have, this opinion that I have, that's a fear, and I don't have to believe that anymore. And I like sometimes they'll show someone like with holding five swords, and there's two swords sort of leaving behind, and because it looks like they're stealing away the five, but I always look at it as you're already starting to drop swords, dropping thoughts and beliefs that no longer serve you. You're already starting to leave some of those behind, which I really feel you've already done a lot of work in this. This is kind of coming to a head because there's just so many things that you're seeing, um, especially this week that are just coming up in your face. And it can be that during this week, there's a lot of stuff in the news, a lot of stuff politically, um, financially, economically, blah, 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 Ellie. You know, it's all this stuff coming in that you're just like, I just have had enough. I'm gonna go for a walk and sit in a park, turn off my phone, or at least put it on silent have a nice little, you know, frappuccino or some sort of icy slurpy drink and just sit out there. Unless you're in the Southern Hemisphere, then you might want a nice little hot tea or something because I know you're starting to get cool down there as we're warming up here in the Northern Hemisphere. But I love the Six of Cups coming in here for you too because the Six of Cups is about emotion and about transforming memories. And what we do with that is it's basically because of this higher perspective you see and with this understanding these small t truths of fear, you're starting to understand, wait a minute, there's two sides to every memory, every story, right? and you start to look back at a memory and if you know that there's always this choice between the two when you go back and look at a memory and go is that memory of unconditional love well not currently in my mind i'm looking at it going oh my gosh it was hurtful it was painful well then that was not of unconditional love that was of the fear of losing conditional love and so when you understand that that memory that situation that happened was just oozing with fear one thing that comes to awareness is that when the human side of us uh, is in fear, it literally goes out of its mind. The blood in our brain when we go into fight or flight um, kind of 
a lot of the blood leaves our brain to go to our arms and our legs and it doesn't want us standing there thinking while well, we get attacked by a mountain lion <laughs> you know it wants us to either fight like heck or run like heck and so when that blood rushes out of our brain we're not thinking uh you know rationally we're not responding we are in animal reaction mode and so that little small child in us when it feels unsafe or out of control that's when it sounds the alarm we're going to fight or flight so it does whatever it feels it needs in an animalistic reactionary way to feel safe again or to feel in control so when you realize that you were in fear and that maybe the person or situation usually there's another person involved that uh, they're saying something or doing something that's sparking that you know out of control and unsafe feeling and so they're usually in fear we're in fear and so we're both acting out of our minds and when you realize that and go back and look at the situation here you understand that oh you know what that wasn't personal that person was just freaking out like an animal they were out of their minds and i kind of was too you know we take ownership for all ourselves of being out of our minds then you start looking at the situation differently you start looking at the uh, other person differently and then you also start looking at yourself differently because you're not taking their action so personal and defining you anymore so you do have this transformation that's happening both in the moment and in your past but then also for your future like we talked about here the gain that you have from this yeah the nine of stabs so when you're feeling attacked you have the stabs or wands is your energy it's your passion your drive your ambition your inspiration your spiritual energy but your energy overall and the nines which you have a nine of swords here too the the nines really are about like the hermit card in the standard tarot it's the major arcana in the the hermit goes inward and finds the answers it finds things from within which is what you're doing this week and so you're finding this new energy coming in uh, this persevering energy where you felt like kind of maybe given up before and you're just exhausted to this point you're finding the answers you know the higher truths from within that new energy from within to this positive uh, energy that's uh, connected to the unconditional love instead yeah <laughs> and there you go ten of cups cups are your emotions the ten of cups is ultimate joy and emotional fulfillment <laughs> and so there you go this is the promise here that you find this energy you find this joy from within when you go through this process and you take a look at it so you know that's what i love is that whatever is happening is happening for us because if we don't do this we get caught in this constant loop of feeling out of control based on whatever's happening in the outside world and it's coming our way but you gain this strength you you gain this wholeness and this completeness and this overflowing joy possibilities that come in that you can choose any time you want even when the situation doesn't warrant it or that's not the popular opinion on how you're supposed to feel around it you can have joy much much more joy than you've ever had in your life so I am loving this for you Torians. if you are looking for more messages of love from above in addition to these weekly energy updates i also put out monthly readings for each zodiac sign and a few other types of videos so if you don't want to miss out on any of those and be notified immediately when they become available if you give this video a little thumbs up and click the like button also click the subscribe button and that gives you access to the notification bell when you go in there, if you click on the all option, then you'll be notified of any new videos that come out on this channel. And also doing those things helps spread the love and it helps my channel grow in significant ways. Because when you like a video, share a video, comment on a video, and especially subscribing to a channel, doing those things makes the YouTube algorithm so giddy and wants to share the videos of this channel with other people as well. So if you feel inspired to do any of that, I am very, very grateful for it. Also, these are general readings, and if you're looking for even more specific information and answers for your specific life, I do offer personal readings, and all that information is listed in the description box below. Right, Torians, as you go through this amazing, revealing, freeing week, please know that every second of every day of your life that you are unconditionally loved by the creator of all things. And of course, I love you too. 
You have an amazing week. I'll be talking to you very soon. In the meantime, you hang in there and you take care.